سنريهم آياتنا في الآفاق وفي أنفسهم حتى يتبين لهم أنه الحق. Well, uh, first of all, I was invited to Saudi Arabia to uh, lecture in embryology at King Abdulaziz University in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. And uh, I went there and I gave my lectures and while I was there, I, at my suggestion, invited Dr. Brasad and Dr. Johnson to come to Saudi Arabia and, and they uh, asked them the same questions and I purposely didn't tell them my interpretations. I wanted them to give their own. So they, they did and their answers were similar to mine. Not only that, and I should say that Dr. Johnson is one of the most outstanding embryologists and teratologists in the United States. We didn't just pick anyone, I picked the best. And, and in, in Canada, Dr. Brissad at University of Manitoba, where I spent 20 years, is also an outstanding embryologist who has uh, three uh, doctor's degrees, plus membership in pathology. So I picked the very best. And then uh, when I started thinking about other embryologists around the world, we brought in Dr. Edwards from Cambridge, who is, uh, some of you remember the early work on in vitro fertilization, where we invited him to Saudi Arabia, and again, he was asked the same questions, and they got essentially the same answers. We also have one of my colleagues from Kyoto in Japan, and uh, although he didn't go to Saudi Arabia, he has been consulted, and, and so on. So we have consulted embryologists around the world for their opinions on these statements in the Quran. And uh, it's clear from what Dr. Prasad has said and from all of our work in this area that these statements are, are correct. The stages, we didn't know about stages, as Dr. Prasad says, until uh, a few uh, years ago. Now we use the stages. We call it stage one, stage two. But working with these scholars in Saudi Arabia, we have developed a system of classification which uh, we expect will be used by Muslim uh, medical and other students, health students around the world. Now, uh, it was about this time that I began to study the uh, Quran and to look at verses referring to embryology. So I found that there was a, a, a large uh, terminology in the Quran referring to human development. Now, uh, as they until uh, recently, it was not known that this holy book of the Muslims uh, and the Sunnah or Hadith, the teachings of Muhammad, contain many citations referring to the stages of human development. Until recently, these statements were not clearly understood, since they referred to details in development which were not scientifically which were scientifically unknown in earlier times. In fact, the Islamic system for classifying human embryos is amazingly uh, is amazing since it was recorded in the 7th century AD. Although Aristotle, as I mentioned before, the founder of the science of embryology, realized that chick embryos developed in stages from uh, uh, hen's eggs in the 4th century, he did not give any details about these stages. Also, the early human embryo is of such a minute size that uh, detailed studies would have been impossible without the microscope. Uh, in the very early stages of human development, the first few days, uh, it's so small that you could just barely see it. Uh, in other words, it's about the size of a period at the end of a sentence. And you could realize how without our modern microscopes, you would not be able to see any of those details of the early stages. Now, as far as we know from the History, history of embryology, little was known about the staging and classification of human embryos until the last hundred years, as, as I've just mentioned. Moreover, the Quranic terminology fulfills the principles for nomenclature and terminology. For this reason, the descriptions of human embryos in the Quran cannot be based on scientific knowledge in the seventh century. The only reasonable conclusion that is that these descriptions were revealed to Muhammad uh, peace be upon him, by God. He could not have known such details because he was an illiterate man. He was not a scientist or an embryology, and he did not have scientific training. And now, the conclusions of this uh, study are that the terms which have been used in the Quran are very descriptive of development, developments which occur in the various stages, and they describe these events in their chronological order. 
Morphological changes that occur with development in each stage are also accurately described by the use of these terms. Because the staging of human embryos is complex, going through a continuous process of change during development, it is proposed that a new system of classification could be developed using the terms mentioned in the Quran and Sunnah. The proposed system is simple, comprehensive, and conforms with present embryological knowledge. The facts about human development that could not have been known by Muhammad, peace be upon him, in the 7th century, because most of them were not discovered until the 20th century. Muslims and others are justified in concluding that these facts could only have been revealed to Muhammad, peace be upon him, by God, who knows all about us, not only about who, how we develop, but how we live and function. Thank you very much.